the nastiest situation happened not among enemies, but among the so-called loud ones. Initially, I loved your works. After some time, you trying to make emotions work for you. The harder you try to make it work, the nastier your life gets. In 1967, John Lennon made a song called All You Need Is Love. He also mistreated both of his wives, abandoned one of his children, verbally abused his gay Jewish manager and once made a camera crew film him lying in the bed for the entire day. Thirty-five years later, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails wrote a song called Love Is Not Enough. Reznor Despite being famous for his shocking stage performances and his disturbing videos, got clean from all drugs and alcohol, married one woman, had children with her and then cancelled his entire album and tours so that he could stay home and be a good husband and father. One of these two men had a clear and realistic understanding of love. One of them did not. One of these men idealized love as the solution for all problems. One of them did not. One of these men was probably a narcissistic jerk. One of them was not. In our culture, many of us idealize love. We see it as some kind of lofty cure for all of our life problems. Our movies and stories and history all celebrate it as life's ultimate goal, the final solution for pain and struggle. And because we idealize feelings of love and emotions, we overestimate it. As a result, our relationships pay a huge price. When we believe that all we need is love, then like Lennon, we are more likely to ignore fundamental values such as respect, humility and commitment towards the people we care about. If anybody thinks that you're going to be on your honeymoon for 51 years, it's ridiculous. But if like Reznor, we believe that love is not enough, then we understand that healthy relationships require more than pure emotion or lofty passions. We understand that there are more important things in our lives and relationships than simply being in feelings and emotions. This I think is the best piece of relationship advice that no one ever tells you. That relationships should be based on more than merely just feelings and emotions. Emotional connectedness just brings dependency. Emotion is something to be enjoyed. It is the juice of life. You don't make your emotions work. You should not make them work. It, you can make your thought work, you can make your body work. Don't try to make your emotions work. Whenever you try to make your emotions work for you, your situations turn nasty, isn't it? <laughs> yes or no? Initially, I loved your works. After some time, you trying to make emotions work for you. The harder you try to make it work, the nastier your life gets. Because emotion is not for work. Emotion is just to sweeten your life. Your thought and your body should work. Emotions, just there. It's like a flower that you wear in your hair. Nobody wears anymore. Okay. You don't make these flowers work, the microphone works, something else works. The flowers need not work, they're just there, that's all. Emotion is like that, it's just there, pleasant and wonderful. If you try to make it work, if you try to extract some life from around you with your emotions, it is bound to turn ugly. So if you don't have a working brain, if you're not capable of thought, then you try to use your emotion to make it work and it may work sometimes, that's the whole problem. It works initially and then you try to push it further, then your life turns so nasty, so horribly nasty. Among people who are supposed to care for each other, the nastiest situation happen not among enemies but among the so-called loud ones. So where does the problem lies? The key to a stronger, lasting relationship starts with recognizing the core problem, and that is 
As time goes on, we naturally form opinions about each other. Imagine this, in the middle of a hectic day, juggling work deadlines and social commitments, you wrote a quick message to your partner asking them to pick up some groceries on their way home. But hours pass and there is no response. Your mind starts racing. Did they forgot? Are they ignoring me? Do they even care? This happens, isn't it? And just like that, a simple unanswered text becomes a catalyst for doubt and insecurity. But here's the thing, more often than not, it's not about them intentionally hurting us. It's about our own insecurities and the opinions we create in our minds. Maybe they have caught up in a meeting or lost track of time. Maybe they are busy in their work and forgot to check their phone. The truth is, we don't always know what's happening in their world. People have their opinions. If you love somebody, you should have no opinion. That's what love means. Love means you're willing to nurture another life without forming opinions. That's what love means. We are loved once we have strong opinions about each other. No, that means you're trying to fix life. An opinion is a way of fixing a person into a straitjacket. Love means nurturing a person into a new possibility. These two things cannot go together. No way they can be together. You make some judgments for the moment to nurture it better. You, you're rearing children at home, you have to make some judgments where the child is right now to rear them to a next possibility, not form an opinion on him. The moment you form an opinion, you have no interest in nurturing that life into a new possibility. You only want to fix it in a shell of your opinion and you will be disappointed if it doesn't go by your opinion. No, that's not the way it works. If you want to live closely with people, it should be a relationship of nurture, not opinionated. It will not work like that. The fundamental mechanics are wrong. So how will it work? By accident, because of the newness of the situation, because it's honeymoon time, it may work for some time, but after that it will not work. So, uh, if truly it's a loving relationship, there should be no opinions, there should be only nurture.